Great British Sewing Bee. Behind the scenes. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Behind the Seams. Uh, this week, we have been in Reduce, Recycle, Reuse week, and we have another special guest joining us today who I'll introduce you to in a second. But uh, first of all, I'm Sarah Payne. As you, if you've been watching these, you'll know I am a regular demonstrator on Create and Craft as a sewer and a quilter. We also have um, Alistair from the House of Alistair. If you can give us a little wave, Alistair, hello. And we have Samantha Hamilton as well from Just Bold Prints. There you go, hello. And today we are joined by the lovely Becky Cole. So she's um, joining us to, uh, well, first of all, she's gonna give us a little bit of an introduction to herself. So Becky, hello, my darling, how are you? Hello. And who are you? <laughs> who am I? Well, that's the question. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yes, hello everybody. I'm Becky Cole. I'm also a demonstrator on uh, Create and Craft um, TV. Uh, and a little bit about myself. I have been sewing since I was about seven. So that's not that long ago, obviously. Um, and <laughs> long, long time. Um, I am trained in period pattern cutting for costume uh, for TV, uh, theatre, etc uh so that's kind of my speciality so i'm a pattern drafter um uh, and dressmaker uh, really uh, throw my hand at all sorts of things i love a bit of crochet i love a bit of embroidery um anything anything soft crafty is what i like um but yeah so that's me really in a very very small nutshell well welcome welcome to our little show we're very delighted Thank you for having me yeah, we're delighted that you can join us this week and give us a, the benefit of your experience. So this week was all about recycling and using stuff that you've already got in your wardrobe. Um, and I'm sure we've all done little bits of this. So we're going to talk about that as we go along. But first of all, we had our first challenge, which was a waistcoat. Now, back in week three, if you've been watching us all the way through, we did do the, the gentleman's drafting uh, show the or the gentleman's tailoring when we said well why didn't they do a waistcoat because that would have been perfect now we know why so this was <laughs> this week's see my very low tech way of reminding you all of the uh, waistcoats for the first challenge um, this week so first of all if we go to Alistair first um, what did you think about this this particular challenge and what do you think stood out for you this week um, <clears throat> I didn't have fabric choices. Obviously, it's really, really difficult to take an existing garment, and a lot of them fell um, really short in terms of, do I use the details? Don't I use the details? Um, you're not going to, if you're trying to use the, the, um, the breast pocket on a suit jacket, you're not, ne <clears throat> you're not necessarily going to actually get the rest of the placement because then the other pocket's going to sit way too far down or you're just going to trim it. Um, so the best thing to do is to use the actual backs of a suit jacket and the actual sleeves, which some of them did. Um, I found the, the simplest thing to do is once you've done your button holes, the button and the button placement, pl pl lay it flat and place it and then chalk through the hole and then apply your buttons. And as you're going down, do the buttons up and then the easiest thing to do is reshank the button, clip the button off and then move it. The buttons are the bits that are to move. They're not necessarily, um, they were just doing it all. But the interesting thing was when you actually looked at the example that they actually showed you as they're all singing, all dancing and the camera panned down their waistcoat, their buttons weren't aligned. I mean, it was sort of like bumpy at the bottom. And I was thinking, hang on, you're supposed to be the, <laughs> you know, the the oracle here of, of what it is. And I'm thinking, you know, you're talking, a, you know, talking up this um, waistcoat. But I've, it was it was challenging. I Four hours, I don't know where the timings are all going each week. It's like, you know, they get five and a half hours to do a dress in the first sort of weeks. Then it then it starts to get reduced. And then you just think four hours to to effectively... They're not just using cloth. They're having to take, you know, other garments, strip them down and, and work out where it is. That's going to take them at least 40 minutes to do that from the beginning. So I thought the timing was a bit mean 
actually, yes. for them mm. to execute what they were supposed to do. Thank you. Now, Becky, um, we had a little chat beforehand and we were mm. talking about that waistcoat pattern and you made a very good point about Rebecca's waistcoat yes do you want to do you want to tell us what you what you thought about her particular waistcoat yeah sure I mean I think they all did a really good job with the challenges that they faced you know I think if you've never made a waistcoat before it isn't the most straightforward thing to make but it is a I think it's one of those magic garments that you just can't really see and then you pull it all through and suddenly you could see in their faces they all went oh, I've made a waistcoat look at it isn't it magic um, but yeah, I mean, it's little things like we're talking about traditional men's tailoring here. Um, and there are certain rules that you have to follow. T uh, men's tailoring is a very different skill set to women's dressmaking. They're two different ball games, really. But the thing that one of the things that sets the two apart is the direction of um, which side the buttons go on versus the buttonholes. So one will go this way. I'm terrible with my left and my right, so um, I'm sure Alistair can tell me which one's which. But the one will go like that, and the next will go like that. And they all had it the right way, except for Rebecca, which put, it, put hers the other way. Um, and I was surprised that no one brought that up because they, they were being very, very strict on things like aligning the buttonholes and, you know, everything needed to be spot on excuse me, spot on with it all. But nobody seemed to call her out on that, which I was quite surprised by. You know, Especially in traditional at. men's tailoring, that's a huge faux pas. Yeah. <laughs> and they were actually following, following a pattern. It would have told her they on were. the pattern. So she's yeah. actually made a big error in that. Um, but yeah. we, have, we have commented before, haven't we, Sam, on we think that there's, there's certain amounts of, like, favouritism um, yes, with the judges, don't you, yes, don't you think yes, that showed up there? The other thing, I just wanted to say something though, Sarah, thanks for pointing that out. What was actually going on with uh, the interfacing, you know what I mean, that was moving forward for nearly all the waistcoats? If you think back of the comments, they kept going about the interfacing, uh, you know, it's the facing coming forward. Yeah, it was big, yeah. yeah. And nearly every one of them had that problem and of course Raphael who's never sewn before other than lockdown he comes first because this was so perfect for somebody who has never sewn I'm being sarcastic here as you know <laughs> um, favoritism favoritism it's always Serena isn't it so here we go again but um, as I say I'm talking about the interfacing coming forwards and I'd like Alistair's opinion on that why was, you know, that was happening? Because I've made a few waistcoats. I've never had that problem before, Alistair. Mm. So because they're not understitching, are they? They can't understitch because mm. it's too late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you see, the, there are... Lo there are <clears throat> so what we do on um, Savile Row is we use a... Um, it's a it's a bit like an invisible saddle stitch, if you like. Yeah. So, for instance, what you do around the whole um, piece, and we do this with women's boucles, um, because that, that's a fabric that needs to be held back. And what you'll notice around the perimeter of a suit, you'll see these tiny little dimples. And what you do is you, you sew through both layers, but you're keeping with your finger and thumb, you're pushing ever so slightly um, the facing underneath and then when you're sewing through you go a little back stitch and you come through they're usually about five mil to a centimeter apart depending if it's an overcoat it's slightly larger if it's a smaller item like a, the lapel or for yeah. instance a waistcoat yeah. then you get these little dimples and my gosh before you've even pressed the item you literally, if you do that sewing, it's well, well, well worth it because wool does wool, wool is very easy to set as well. So, for instance, we use um, a heat and an instant cooling um, mechanism. And in Savile Row, we use these um, big wooden blocks. Uh, some of them have a, an iron plate on the bottom. And what you do is you press, and as soon as you press, you put the wooden block on top. Now that cools the wool instantly, and that's what we call setting. And it's it keeps clapper. everything flattened. Yeah. Oh, you've frozen. Oh, we've, we, we've lost Alistair there for oh. a second. So, so we'll, oh, oh, I, <laughs> oh, I'm back. 
We yeah, also need that, 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 wooden, that wooden block is called a clapper. I have one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I have one of those. I use it in quilting actually and bag making. Yes, very, very do. useful for exactly Brilliant. the reasons that Alistair's there. So um obviously uh Rafe or Raphael won with his his waistcoat there. Um, very quickly, um, I, I particularly in that challenge, I like Andrews. I was I was really fond of Andrews there. Um, but did the everybody red else one? agree? Yes, the red one. Oh, it was so beautiful. Else, very quickly, um, in 10 seconds, Alistair, yes or no to Rafe, and if not, who? Um, I thought the colour choice was nice. Um, I thought how he actually um, pieced the pieces together was very clever, and especially in the time. But I agree with Sam. This is not his first rodeo, and hes I don't think he's um, a, um, a hobbyist sewer. Yes. No. So, Becky, if we go to Becky now, wh what did you think? Put you on the spot. I think, yeah, I completely agree with Alistair. I think his was his was beautiful, um, and I like the fact he was the only person who took de completely deconstructed and reconstructed, wasn't he? Which I think I would have done in that situation, uh, or I'd like to think I would do that in that situation. Um, I quite liked. Was it Damien's where he had all the different colours, the different? He took. He used several different. Is it That's Damien's Damien. one? Yes, um, that's, that, that's Damien. He yes, is yeah. His, his one where he had the different colours. And I also did like, um, it, was it Serena's with the, I've written it all down, but I can't read my own writing. She, uh, yeah, Serena's with the black, well. the black brocade and the yeah. black and gold. And I, thought, yeah. I thought they all did a really nice job with it, mm. really. Okay, so so Sam, what were your thoughts? Because we know that you've been a big Raphael fan. I was um, until I now know that he's not speaking the truth, but you know what? There you go. Uh, my favourite was his, but also Andrew's was amazing. Um, Sabrina's was absolutely fantastic as well. So yeah, they, they were they were all pretty good, apart from Adina that was went out. Yeah, was a, yeah. Was a I mess. liked that idea. I like that idea, but let's move on to the transformation challenge, which this week's was army surplus. Now, when mm. I was a student, I used to wear a lot of army surplus, because it was cheap, <laughs> <laughs> as you do, and secondhand pairs of jeans, so that's what, and my Dr. Martins. It's not a look I, I can carry off these days, but when I was a student, it was all right. Um, so the transformation, they had to change army surplus into um, an outfit for women or for a woman. And this is the uh, the finished ones, just to very quickly remind you of what they looked like. So again, very quickly, um, if we start this time, we'll start with Sam. So Sam, out of those, which um, design did you like the best and I why? Actually, I actually liked Sabrina's the best, but they commented and said it was rather plain. They said it wasn't wearable, but that was the... The challenge yeah. was to make a wearable item of clothing. They said, rather, they said it was rather dull or boring or whatever, but I actually liked the way she constructed it. I liked the way she put her ideas together for me. Nice long evening dress. But wasn't there a comment about something could have gone down the catwalk? I don't know if you know who that was now. Oh, uh, no, that's that's the next that's the next challenge. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. sort of getting confused. But yeah, I like Serena's. So personally, I, I rather like, I've written at the bottom of this one, actually, who's is who's, just to remind me, but I did like Farris with the cape, but oh, no. it was very costumey. It was it did look like a superhero cosplay outfit. Oh, who was in it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was Esme, Esme, Esme yeah, tried it yeah. on. But um, they said it was very costumey, but... Or, so they liked it, but I thought it was very costumey. And before they picked people up on, on whether something looks a little bit cosplayish. So again, it was like yeah. I didn't agree with the comments there. What do you think, Alistair? What did you think of Farry? Because she obviously she did win that challenge. Uh, I think, to, to be honest, uh, the challenge of with the peak shoulders and things like that. Um, it's something that we've seen quite a, a bit. I actually think that um, Serena's with the use of the actual label, I just think if people need to stop themselves when it comes to adding things, that, that add-on camouflage skirt 
app thing at the bottom did nothing <laughs> for that at all. Okay. It was it, it was literally just sti- it was like Damien had just literally stitched it on for it at the bottom because he just likes to you know block things. I didn't I didn't like that at all. I thought the comments before that one were a bit unfair. If we move on to uh, Raf's, I thought that that was actually. Um, it, it was really, really nice, and it was it was ve- it was kind of a, a, a real homage to sort of uh, couture. Um, Damien's I didn't um, particularly like. I actually wrote before we had actually got onto that challenge for that ninety minutes. I just went, Adina is going, um, but then also, I'm not a fan of them raiding the haberdashery for trim. It either needs it or it doesn't. Just stop putting. And I think it's Rebecca that keeps putting ribbon across. The thing is, yeah, if that's going to add she some did. detail, it's like, yeah. Yeah, she must, yeah, she must have gone to brownie mm. school or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, for me, it just, it, for me, it just doesn't stop adding. Just look at what you're doing. Serena's was just really, really beautiful. And it was wearable and it was something, and I thought the transformation for what she did was, was, was bang on. Mm. So, mm-hmm. Becky, do you think the judges' comments were were fair about that particular challenge, or did you disagree with you know Farry winning? Because we had Farry, then Rafe, uh, then Serena, Andrew, Damien, Rebecca, and Adina. So, yeah, I think I think the trouble with that particular challenge was the the guidelines seemed a bit muddled. Like like you say, they. One was praised for having it quite costumey and out there when, as before, that's been frowned upon. And then one got marked down because it was wearable and looked like an actual garment. And it's like, but isn't that what you were asking for? Um, so I think, I don't know. It was a little bit confusing for me. I, I felt confused. So I don't know how they must have felt actually doing it. Um, you know, like, what are the, what are the guidelines here? Because you can't, keep chain, moving the goalposts, put it that way. Um, I think, um, I, I think again, they all did a fairly good job. I felt a little bit sorry for Rebecca, actually, Alison. You said about that ribbon trim, and I agree with you that it, it didn't need it there, but she did have a good reason for putting it there because she wanted it, to, she can remember she called it a bullet sash, mm. <laughs> and they were making a joke that they should call them bullet sashes, but I kind of got where she was trying to go with it, she was trying to be um, introduce the military more. And it didn't witty. quite work. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But I felt a bit sorry for her because obviously in this challenge, the judges come in and, can't, and don't know who's is whose. So there's no conversation between the contestant and the judge on what's going on. So they were like, what on earth is this bit of ribbon here for? And at no point was she given the opportunity to go, okay, I might not have got it right, but this was my motivation. And I... And I hate it when that happens to me in real life. Like I'm not given the opportunity to defend myself. So a little part of me was like, oh, I feel a bit sorry for you with that because I got what she was trying to do, whether it worked or not. So I felt a bit sorry for her then. Um, I agree with you that I think by this point we knew Adina was going, but um, I loved Serena's. Farry, uh, I, I really liked what she did. I actually think, and I'll go into this a bit more later on when we talk, I think she's one to watch myself. She's a bit of an unknown entity, I think. Yes, and she has won Garment of the Week three times in a row. Three times in a row. Mm. So when she finishes. I'm intrigued by her, but I think she comes, obviously, later on. I've, we'll, always, uh, I've always predicted that uh, Raphael was going to be um, the winner, really. I still have that vibe. I'm not sure if he deserves it anymore, but there you go. <laughs> well, well, we'll come on to that in, in a second, um, Sam. So thank you very much, Becky. We're going to talk about that final challenge now, which, um, spoiler alert, you, you, you know what's going on if you're watching this, but um, we know that um, this were, this, the, the garment of the week and the winner of the week was... Raphael. Now his outfit, um, I do have some pictures of it here to remind you, she says in this massive pile of photographs. Okay, I will remind you about it in a second. (laughs) You see, I, I print out all of these pieces and then can't find them. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other ones first of all. I'd like to, um, first of all, bring in uh, Rebecca. So this is Rebecca's. 
Um, now, she had been in the bottom three of the previous two. And um, I quite liked this. But again, mm. it showed me the, the judging comments because Patrick went mad over the... And so did Esme, actually. And they went mad over that. And, and Patrick was saying, that is so difficult to get that correctly. No, it's not. It's French braid. It is basic patchwork. That easy peasy, well, Patrick. Well, perhaps, easy peasy. Perhaps, perhaps to them, Sarah, it was difficult. It's all square. Not yeah, but they're not patchworkers, are they? Do you know what no, I mean? No, no, but they are sewers and they should understand construction of two strips of cotton that go together. So when Patrick said it was very difficult, I didn't, it, it's, really, it's really not. It's one of the basic I, things, sewing I, together I just, squares. I don't think he said it was difficult. Honestly, yes, they are sewers and they're constructors and they're packed, whatever. But if that's not their skill as sewers, they may see it as difficult and challenging. Seriously. Mm. Mm. <laughs> there's no curves, there's no darts, there's nothing complicated, I know, I know, I know, there's no bias yeah. stretch. Well, there is a little bit down the sides, but uh, yeah, I just thought I, I watched that and I thought, mm. do you know why I'm saying this, Sarah? Because folks that I know that are dressmakers that don't quilt, they freak out. Then yes. quilters that don't dressmake, they freak out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, you see, I do both. Um, yeah, so but right. I think, yeah, but I think patch, uh, the, the difference between patchwork and dressmaking is patchwork, you have to be so accurate. You're talking millimetre precision, whereas dressmaking, you can get away with a little bit. Yeah. But also with yeah. dressmaking, you're going around a form. You are, you can, you, 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 you know, our sizes change throughout the month, throughout the weeks, throughout the years. You know, you're not, if you... If you've got two bits, they can very, you, you can get away with it, you know, or, or when we looked at um, Serena's dress, you know, that would have been obvious if that hadn't been lined up. When it comes to side seams and things like that, there's, there's give in clothing. Yes. So five eighths of an inch, you know, you can, you, you can, you can unpick, you can trim a little bit. You can't do what's that. that? With what's that the challenge, what's that? Hang on, can I just the, the finish there, Sam? Sorry. The challenge with dressmaking is fitting it to a form. Yeah. Whereas quilters do everything flat and we cut everything with a ruler. Dressmaking to quilters just seems like voodoo because you've got to shape it to a form. <laughs> so sorry there, Sam, I just wanted to finish uh, that. What were you what's that, that was her dress quite big in the back or something? Uh, yes, it was. I think it was a bit bulk along the sides. It wasn't right, particularly right. well fitted. Yeah. yeah. So and that's the struggle with denim, though. I find denim as a fabric doesn't cling. It holds its own. That's kind of the point of the fabric. So none of them got the fit spot on with these dresses. Yeah. The only one they didn't comment on a fit was Raf's. And that's because it was completely A-line and didn't actually need to fit any oh, curls. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so what did can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can hear I muted it and it still did it. <laughs> Alistair, Sorry. here we go. We've got Serena's dress here, where um, you were just shaking your head when I was saying the precision. But you need that precision down the front yeah. here, don't you? Because if that was a millimetre out. But that's... What did you think of that one? Because Esme said about the, the flare was all at the side. What did you think? I thought it was lovely. That was my favourite. Yeah. <clears throat> Just... Well, it's, it, it wasn't my favourite um, at all. I was not a fan of the, um, the, the, the two-tone with... Uh, I, I know she's, she's used that, um, th that form before. She's used, you know, half and half. I'm, in this instance, I'm not a big... I, I'm, I wasn't a big fan of it at all. With Esme, I do agree with what she actually said, don't I, dear? Yeah. Um, but literally... <laughs> um, it was the 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 for some reason she'd either either at home she'd added extra volume and a, and a lot of people who aren't pattern cutters make this fundamental mistake you can't just add a triangle onto the side because what will happen is it will just go it won't fall and then distribute the thing so what you need to do is you need to use what we call a slashing technique which is to take that whole panel piece slice it into sections fan it out and then redraw in the curve so that all of the weight from the fabric is is evenly distributed out so it will fall much much nicer i was i just wasn't a fa i just wasn't a fan of i thought it was well executed 
um, but I, I just wasn't a fan of the 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 two the the two tone. I didn't I didn't like it. Okay, now Becky, um, I'm going to show you now. This is Farry's. Yeah. I love hers. I absolutely yeah. love that. So, what did you think of that, Becky? Uh, Alistair's shaking his head, so we'll come to you in a second. <laughs> I thought I thought the two ended zip was fabulous. I thought that was a brilliant idea. So you could zhuzh it up, you could sex it up, or sort of tone it down a little bit with your zips. But what did you think, Becky? I thought I thought it was inspired to steer away from the blue because she was the only person who did that. Um, yeah, the real feature of the zip, which I think really chunky metal zips work so well with denim. Um, and again, going with the black and the white, there's no room for error there. Like you really, that takes some precision sewing. So would I wear it? Probably not. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to sit here and appreciate the skill that it took. And also just to kind of think outside the box to do a side zip and to do the black and white rather than the blue. I think... Um, I really kind of wanted to want to acknowledge and recognise that, if you see what I mean, because um, you know, that that takes skill, and mm. I think when you can appreciate the level of skill involved in something, whether it's your cup of tea or not, you can still appreciate it. So, Alistair, you were shaking your head there. Is that because of the fit? Is that why you were shaking your head on that one? Bang on, uh, literally. I loved this. I, I loved the silhouette and what what she actually did. I'm not taking anything away from what she was doing, but when they were critiquing lots of people about, you know, the fact that well, the, the general rule is when you're doing something that you're trying to make body con and you're trying to fit it to somebody, please, 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 fit does not mean tight. And when you make it tight around the hips, what will happen is if you're if if you've made the body too long what happens is that's when you get all these bumps and stuff like that and when you're mm. using a a, a a heavier weight fabric you're going to get that you need to when you're fitting it before you put zips and stuff like that in check the, the distribution of your pattern on the person you know put it on do you have to lengthen or shorten it they've had time to do that a lot of them were doing that but i just i just felt Although she is one of the top runners, this is where I think the, the bit of the favoritism is slightly coming in. They're letting a lot of things slip with the ones that they want to maybe go further. And then other ones, they're being really heavy on them. I mean, for instance, Andrew's zip he had on the back. I actually thought as a concept and idea, I actually thought, yeah, there was a lot wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. But to actually put that zip along the back where he did, I actually thought the zip didn't look actually that... Um, didn't look that mm. bad yeah and then we had Rafe so we had the finished denim I like this is again where I felt and I wrote favoritism because this is a dressmaking show it is about sewing obviously coming in with interesting designs and things like that like Farry does that's part of it but it should be down to the sewing now his idea was great but I thought it was poorly executed so for example his twin needle his twin stitches when he was sewing all of those randomly cut pieces he didn't use a twin needle so they weren't all parallel use a twin needle takes you half the time it's going to be so much neater i know the idea of the raw edges was a great idea but it was a little bit lazy because he didn't finish anything he didn't finish the neckline everything was left raw and that i felt it was form over function. I felt it was design over the quality of the sewing. And while it was very clever and very innovative, that's not what this show is not about fashion designers. And when Patrick said that could go down a runway, it probably could, but that's not what this competition, this isn't Britain's next biggest designer. This is the sewing bee. So I found myself getting slightly irritated at that point. <laughs> maybe Sarah, maybe Sarah, maybe Sarah, maybe they're pushing it in that direction you know all about design. Well, there are other shows mm. for that you know this and is we, know, we know that we, I yeah, hear you we know that yeah. and i agree with you but i think he wanted a rough frayed rugged look because that's what it looked like but it, it looked could like still it be so with precision yard. because his stitching yeah. was very rough when they zoomed in and yeah, you look at the double lines of stitching it wasn't it wasn't neat um it was very clever but, and then actually I thought, why didn't he 
free motion around that whale. He would have found that so much easier just to drop the feed dogs. So I'm, so I'm, saying that. I'm not defending him, but how many pieces did he have? Did he have 36 or 46? Or he had a lot of pieces. Yeah, he had a lot of pieces. So, so of course his sewing was going to be rough and rugged. But he and... could have done it quicker, quicker if he'd used a twin needle. <laughs> I, think, I think if he is... If he is as mm. inexperienced as he says he is, because he said he started mm. during lockdown, but we have seen him showing things that he sewed two or three years ago. Exactly. Um, maybe that would be that would be an excuse if he is in that inexperienced. But Ash, uh, Alistair, you just raised your hand very politely there. What, what did you want to say <laughs> before we get all? Oh, well, I'm it. Well, I'm just you know I just one very very simple way in which Rafe could have actually have. Um, taken all of his time out completely was to actually <clears throat> like you do um on tiered things if he had um laid one um cut one um wavy piece and then you then added a straight piece onto the straight bottom and then with the sew machine you then cut there then with a small pair of scissors then cut in the wave yep. then it would have looked precisionally perfect you don't have to cut each wave out separately you just use the panel pieces and that would have sped things up creating all those pattern pieces unless you're actually seaming in you know silk and silk satin to create a, a, a tiered you know real flow in a, a, an address you don't really need pattern pieces for that i just felt the um the whale as well i just felt when he was sewing the whale on, he was literally more than a centimetre away from the actual raw edge. Mm. And that, to me... Shouldn't he have zigzagged that, Alistair, in? Or a tree could have played it in? Or he, could have, he could have used some of House of Alistair's bond and repair and oh, literally absolutely. put... and then And then just applique <laughs> it on. And then what you could have done is you could have sewn around and faked it in terms of... So around your um, your whale, and then literally glue it on. There were so many other that, things. That's his inexperience coming in, I guess. Mm. So Becky, what did you think of that particular that particular outfit? I thought it was very innovative. I wouldn't have put the whale on the front. I have to admit. I know it was all about the sea and everything, but I just felt like it sort of spoilt it a bit. But then that's just me. Um, I agree with you. It's not, a, it's not about who can design the best, but uh, there is a trend I'm noticing uh, towards that kind of thing. Um, you know, you can kind of almost pick out the ones that you, you know are going to win the, the judges' favour before they've even started judging. I agree. Um, you know, and, and that was one of those moments. I was sat here watching it with my husband last night and I went, that one's going to win. And he was like, well, I don't like it doesn't matter that one's going to win and it did um you know they started um it was a few weeks ago uh they did a challenge where they had to make the uh summer dresses with the buttons down the front yeah. and uh it was Adina that did a um uh d drafted her own pattern and she was the only person who drafted her own pattern and they really kind of focused on that and really celebrated her for that and I thought that was wonderful because that like Sarah says that's what this show is about it's about skill in the sewing the technique and the skill of dressmaking and sewing um and it's sort of starting to veer off that towards the couture thing is that, is that why yeah. they keep going on about serena serena being a great sewer serena 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 they don't really mention anybody else's great sewing yeah i mean serena's she does have very neat sewing skills i have to say i i, I do kind of agree you know, the, the bits we've seen, obviously we're not seeing it quite like the judges are. We're just seeing the stuff they show us. But it, that I, I think they are right. She does seem to have a very high level of, of mm. sewing ability. Um, mm. But I don't know whether it's because Raf seems to kind of come out of the background a bit and is winning more, especially now Adam's gone. He's sort of stepped into his, his shoes and gone, now it's my time to shine. And his style is very, like he does come up, you could see it in the army jacket that he you know he turned into that dress it was all it's all very designery um and more about that than the talent so maybe it's because they've kind of shone a spotlight on him that we're seeing this veer towards the couture mm. side of things rather than uh yeah, the, the sewing ability been on him the spotlight's always been on rough you know it's it's not but he was your he's been your favorite since the beginning until i think probably last week but we've now got to the point where um Obviously, Adina went this week. And I think we're getting to the point where um, 
the, 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 we're separating sort of the wheat from the chaff. Um, mm. Personally, I think Damien has reached his, his limit. And then after that, you've just got uh, how many? Two, four, you've got five sort of really good sewers that it's all to play for now. But Adina went this week and I, personally, I felt it was her time. Yeah. Um, I would miss her because she has done some fabulous stuff. Um, I, I go back to that, the, the black dress that she did with the floral over netting, which she didn't finish, but I still think was probably one of my favorite designs, but it was her, her time to go. So very quickly, Alistair, Adina, yes or no? I think it was right, but I just wish that, um... I, I just wish that Adam was still in the in the running because I think that it would have it'll mm. up, if he was still in it would up everybody's ante yes. because when he was using draping techniques and something like that it's a completely different skill set and that's somebody who knows about form and fit and sewing. Becky, what did you think, Adina? Yes, I think it was definitely her time. Um, I agree with Alistair about the Adam thing. It was it, it, I think he just kind of lucked out at the wrong time. Um, but Adina was consistently not great this week. It was, it would have been an injustice to the others if somebody else had gone in her place. Yeah. What about you, but what about you Sam? Absolutely agreed. She just kept getting everything wrong, but something you haven't talked about really, and I know we've got to be quick. I did like her paisley painting and, and fabrics that she mm. put together, you know, in, you know, her concept and her, her, her ideas, if she just slowed down her thoughts and her mind, and she was very passionate about it because her father or grandfather was in the army, you know, mm. but she just got herself into a real model, didn't she? I think it was all her lack of planning. She just didn't really look towards the, for, the, the end of the thing. Damien is just as bad, like, with this following of instructions <laughs> drives me flipping mad. <laughs> but with the, you know, with Adina, she just sort of didn't really, she just dived in and started without actually thinking it through and it didn't do her any favours. I think you're right there because she kind of changed, she was doing one thing then she yeah. just decided to do something else. So yeah. But she changed, it, she, she changed halfway through. So she uh, on all of them. 45, yeah, she'd, she, she changed halfway through, 45 minutes she lost. If she'd have carried on and just sorted out the issues with that, mm. she may have not not come last so uh, anyway and now we're going to talk about our top three contestants going forwards so very quickly last time Alistair you had Serena Rebecca Andrew Samantha had Sabrina Rebecca Andrew and I had Serena Rebecca and Andrew so uh, first of all I'm going to do mine very quickly so I'm saying Rafe uh, Serena and Farry because I think Farry's got a lot to offer so Alistair what are your three um, well, I'm just put, I'm just probably going to put Raf for the next um, six weeks in there because I think it's just sort of a done deal. Um, <laughs> but then also I've got Andrew because I think he is a bit of an underdog that actually does surprise um, sometimes. And of course, um, I will put Serena back in there. Sam, what, what's yours? Oh, uh, well, I think it's unfair, but it's going to be Raf, but it's unfair. Serena... And Farry, so. Okay, so we're, we're still pretty much in agreement. Uh, Becky, who do you think, obviously, because you weren't here last week, who do you think is going to win the series? I think, um, I think, Ra going on where we're at right now, I would say Raph is probably going to win. I would like Serena to win. Um, because she's a better sewer. Yes, but I think she reminds me a little bit of me when I was at uni and stuff. I think I connect with her quite a lot as well, and um, just on her ethos towards what she's doing. But I do think Farry is one to watch because she started off in... I thought she'd be one of the first people gone. In the first couple of weeks, there was that never finishing anything. Like It was just... She just wasn't a competitor. And yeah. all of a sudden, she's just flourished and come out of herself. And you can see her confidence booming. Um, and I'd really like her to do, if she wins, I'd be quite happy. Um, Fantastic. But I think Raph will probably do it, but I'd like it to be Serena. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. So first of all, just I want to say a very big thank you, Becky, for joining us. Thank you today. for having me. Our pleasure, our pleasure. Um, now, obviously, this week was about recycling, reusing um, and reducing our waste, which is, you know, fast fashion, 
um, uh, is something that we, we've all got to take control of because obviously we're wasting so much um, of our natural resources on it. But we have a couple of questions for you guys at home. We would love for you to comment and post pictures. I've got a couple of questions that you can respond either with an emoji or even better with a comment or a picture. If you give us a thumbs up in the comments, if you started making your own clothes with the intention of lessening uh, your impact on the environment um, and creating clothes that you would wear for longer. So give us a thumbs up if you're doing that. Give us a uh, smiley face if you are um, already actively um, upcycling or repairing your existing clothes um, because visible mending is a really busy trend. You'll see that all over social media with people using sashiko stitches and embroidery machines to repair visibly. If you're doing that, please do share pictures because we love, we love to see those. So um, that's, we would love to see your, your comments as well. Now, obviously next week we are one down. So we have left Andrew, Damien, Farry, Raphael, Rebecca and Serena. And next week we're doing winter wear, which right now, even though we're in May, <laughs> perfect timing so next week it's actually um they're going to make making a flannel shirt so we can all channel our inner lumberjack uh using old scarves to make an item of clothing and a glamorous winter party dress so we are all looking forward to that immensely so yeah. thank you again to alistair becky sam for joining me and uh for you for tuning in and we'll see you next week um, on Thursday after we've all watched The Sewing Bee on Wednesday night at 9 o'clock on BBC One. See you soon. Bye-bye.